When caring for patients in a hospital, healthcare workers will commonly find themselves needing to use PPE, or personal protective equipment. PPE includes a wide variety of items that protect the wearer from contamination when caring for a patient. This includes gloves, gowns, masks, face shields, goggles, shoe covers, etc. Properly applying and removing, otherwise known as donning and doffing, of PPE protects the wearer from coming into contact with infectious agents that may be present in the room. It also helps to prevent the spread of those infectious agents to other patients in other areas in the hospital. In this video, we will demonstrate the proper method of donning and doffing of PPE, including gloves, gown, masks, and face shields. We will utilize black light to illuminate fluorescence that will represent the infectious agents to better visualize the importance of proper PPE usage. Gloves should always be worn when in contact with a patient. Before donning gloves, always wash or disinfect your hands, which you should be doing any time you walk into a room. You don't want to risk contaminating the box or other gloves if your hands are already carrying contaminants. When donning clean gloves, there isn't much to the technique. Clean gloves are not meant to be sterile. They protect the wearer from contaminating their hands. When the hands are clean and the gloves are clean, simply put on the gloves. After you've finished with whatever work had to be done, the outside of the gloves will be contaminated. Throughout this video, contamination will be shown under black light and will be represented by the fluorescent solution you can see here on these contaminated gloves. You need to remove or doff the gloves, but if you aren't careful, you could still contaminate your hands, arms, or clothing with whatever it is that's now on the gloves. In this example, the gloves are quickly ripped off from the first hand, which causes the contaminant to be flung from the gloves and come to rest on the table. And because the second glove is then removed by the ungloved hand grasping from the outer surface of the glove, contaminant is spread to the fingers and palm and wrist of the first hand. These issues can be avoided by utilizing proper technique and just being a little bit more careful. In an incorrect technique seen here, to remove the first glove, the wearer grasps the glove from the cuff over the wrist, and in doing so, contaminates the skin on her wrist. The correct method for removing the first glove is to grasp by pinching the glove at the palm so your gloved hand will not come into contact with any skin or clothing. The contaminated surface of one hand will only contact the already contaminated surface of the other hand. Then gently pull the glove off the hand, turning the glove inside out in the process. This will minimize the flinging of contaminant we saw with the incorrect method. Next, gather the doffed glove in the fist of the still gloved hand. In the incorrect example, we saw the wearer remove the second glove by attempting to grasp the contaminated outside surface of the second glove with her ungloved hand, and in the process significantly contaminated her bare hand. The correct method that would avoid this issue is to use your thumb or finger and slide it up your wrist under the glove's cuff. Be careful only to touch the inside of the glove with your hand, not the contaminated outer surface. Your uncontaminated finger should only touch the uncontaminated inner surface of the glove. Then, gently peel the glove off of the hand, turning the glove inside out in the process. By removing in this method, you have contained the first glove inside the second, and the only exposed surface of either of the gloves is the uncontaminated inner surface of the second glove. You can now handle this glove with minimal risk of contamination and dispose of it in the garbage. When doffed properly, you will be able to avoid contaminating your hands with anything present on the outer surface of the gloves. But even when doffed perfectly, you should always be washing or disinfecting your hands following the removal of gloves. When donning the standard regalia of PPE for a room with infection precautions, it will usually include gloves, a gown, a mask to cover your nose and mouth, and eye protection or a face shield. Airborne precautions would require a properly fitted respirator instead of a surgical mask, but the general areas of coverage, hands, body, mouth, and eyes, will be consistent. The CDC has set guidelines to proper donning and doffing order and procedure to best protect the wearer and the patient from contamination. This video will follow the CDC guidelines to demonstrate donning and doffing procedures. To properly don these PPE items, first wash your hands, and then begin with the gown. This disposable gown has a hole for the head as well as thumb openings at the hands. Some gowns will require a tie behind the head and may have elastic at the wrists instead of thumb holes. The gown should fully cover the torso from neck to knees and arms to at least the end of the wrists. Tie the gown behind your waist. Next, down the mask. It should extend from the bridge of your nose to below your chin. With surgical masks, be sure to pinch the mask at the bridge of your nose to properly form it to your face. 
If you are wearing a respirator for airborne precautions, you should have been fit tested to ensure proper fit and function. Thirdly, put on the goggles or face shield. And finally, apply the gloves. The gloves should extend over the wrist of the gown. With this disposable gown, this is easily achieved if you have your thumbs in the thumb holes as seen here. But regardless of what type of gown you are wearing, the wrist of the gown should be underneath or inside of the cuff of the glove. Donning in this method ensures you are adequately protected while caring for the patient. It also sets things in place for an easier and more efficient doffing process after you have finished caring for your patient. With your PPE donned, you can safely and confidently care for your patient. In this example, we have a nurse wearing the appropriate PPE for a patient in droplet precautions coming in to clean up the patient. With most infectious agents, you not only have to be aware that they are present on the patient, but also that they have spread through the room onto most, if not all, surfaces through patient contact, breathing, coughing, etc. Here we can see that not only the patient is contaminated, but also the gown, the sheets, the blanket, and the bed. So as you work through the room, you will come into contact with a multitude of surfaces that will potentially transfer that contaminant to you. But if you have taken the appropriate precautions, your PPE will provide excellent protection while you complete your work. <coughs> when you're finished working with the patient, you will have likely come into contact with contagions, probably many times, and you will be carrying them around on you wherever you go next. But if you are protected by PPE, it will be easy to strip those contagions away and continue your day without worrying about carrying or spreading those infectious agents. When doffing your contaminated PPE, the process is a bit more specific. Your goal is to remove the gown, gloves, face shield, and mask without contaminating your clothes or skin. And if done incorrectly, you will likely contaminate your clothes and skin, and continue to spread that contaminant to whatever else you touch. So again, the CDC has set a standard for the safe removal of PPE. The order is important. You begin with the gown and gloves, followed by the face shield or goggles, then the mask, and then wash your hands. For contact or droplet precautions, all PPE should be removed before leaving the room. If the patient is on airborne precautions and you are wearing a respirator, the respirator should remain on until you have exited the room and closed the door. If you remove the respirator before exiting the room, you would put yourself at risk of breathing airborne contaminants. First, you will remove the gown and gloves. Because you donned the gloves over the wrist of the gown, you will be able to remove both of these items in one motion. In this video, we are utilizing a tearaway disposable gown. If you have a non tearaway or reusable gown, the process will be slightly different, and you can reference that process on the CDC website. In the incorrect example, we saw the nurse first untie the back of the gown, spreading the infectious agent to her back. Then she removed her gloves, also not using proper technique, and contaminated her hands. And then she continued to contaminate her hands further by pulling the gown off by grasping the outside contaminated surface with her bare hands and gathering it up before disposing of it. The appropriate method is to utilize the tearaway aspect of this gown and remove the gloves in the same motion as you remove the gown. First, with your still gloved hands, grasp the front of the gown at the waist at the same level as the ties that tie in the back. Pull away until you feel those ties break. Then grasp the front of the gown near the neck and pull away until the gown tears away from your neck. The gown is now detached from your body. Fold or roll the gown so that only the uncontaminated inner surface is exposed. Pull the gown down over your arms and hands. Because the gloves were donned over the sleeves of the gown, the gloves will be removed and turned inside out as you remove the gown. If you performed this step correctly, you have doffed the gown and gloves and remain free of contamination. Next, you will need to remove the face shield or eye protection. In the incorrect example, the nurse grabbed the face shield from the front that was contaminated, further contaminating her hands. Then she pulled the shield up over her face. This movement puts the nurse at risk of contaminating her face. If the shield comes into contact with her face or hair as she pulls it back up and across her face, she will spread that infectious agent onto her skin and hair. The correct method of removing goggles or face shields is to grab from the back of the device. For a face shield with an elastic band, that's at the back of the head. If goggles are worn, that may be behind the ears. Then, to remove the shield, instead of pulling across the face, pull away and down, away from your face, to avoid any risk of spreading infectious agents over your face or hair. Finally, remove the mask in much the same way. If your mask anchors behind the ears, grab from behind the ears and pull down and away from your face. If the mask ties in the back, release the ties and pull down and away from your face. 
dispose of the PPE in the proper receptacle, and then wash or disinfect your hands. PPE is worn to protect both the healthcare worker and the patient. It's important to not only wear the proper equipment to provide that protection, but also to know how to safely apply it and remove it to minimize any risk of spreading infectious agents. By following the steps demonstrated in this video, you will be able to keep both yourself and your patients safe from these risks.